educating Cardiff is absolutely wild. Yeah, because you're not listening to me. You keeps on giving me looks all the time. How am I damaging stuff? Hello, friends. Today, we will be breaking down an episode of Educating Cardiff, possibly the most mental educated series that's out there. And if you've never watched this show before, don't worry, because he has a quick rundown. This show documents the dramatic lives of students and teachers at Willows High School in Cardiff. The ups, the downs, and all the drama involved in school life. And the episode we're looking at today focuses on two girls who are apparently the worst behaved children in Wales. These two have like zero respect for anybody. So get comfy and let's dive right into it. The episode starts off with a teacher telling the students how much a 16 year old gets paid compared to a 21 year old for doing the same job. If you're over 16 and you're working full time, they have to pay you at least £3.72 an hour, okay? If you're over 21, the minimum wage is 6.31. That is actually mental when you think about it. How does somebody get paid less for doing the exact same job just because of their age? It makes no difference. Fair enough if you've got more experience, but why does age come into it? Especially when a load of 16-year-olds have to pay board as soon as they leave school. How are they meant to pay board on £3.72 an hour? The camera then pans to a group of girls listening to the teacher and they look absolutely sick of their life. I just remember this so vividly in school you know when you get to the point in school where you know like they're talking about leaving and everything's coming at you so fast and all you want to do is just sleep that girl said she wanted to kill herself that's how i felt i to kill myself right now all you want to do is play clash of clans and instead they're teaching you about ISA accounts i don't care i don't have any money why would i want to learn how to save it what you want me to put a quid of my three pound seventy in an ISA account are you mad makes no sense we then meet the head teacher of the school miss bollard and she tells us that the girls in this particular school are terrifying. Apparently the male students and even the teachers are scared of them. What are the more difficult things about being a teacher? Girls. <laughs> Girls' problems. <laughs> Am I right? I'm glad somebody finally said it. Girls, so all they talk about is their bloody problems, their bloody, their bloody pillow fights, and and how they've got to stay up late all night talking about boys. Bloody girls' problems. <laughs> you actually kissed him? No, actually, he kissed me first. <laughs> <laughs> School problems are so funny. You kissed him first? No, actually, he kissed me first. Get it right. Get it right in your skull. Your stupid hairline receding fuck. <laughs> Why does it matter? You both kissed. What? Who's it? What? Who's does it really matter who kiss first? I think you have to worry about now. Furthermore, the show continues to build these girls into some scary resistance. The girls in school are quite plain speaking. You know, there's no sort of beating around the bush or mincing words or whatever. Dear, come on! Yeah, yeah. What the? Ah, out of my eyes. Feel like I've been pepper sprayed. How could a student fist pump a teacher? Oh, no respect. Lock that girl up and throw away the key and put a parker in the fire. She should never see the light of day again. Are able to binge watch Pretty Little Liars ever again. Her days are over. Hi, Emily. No, you're too loud. Sorry, hi, Emily. <laughs> She was like, whoa, 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 mate. Inside voice, use it. I've only had two hours sleep. Can you please quiet down? I was out all last night drinking Frosty Jacks in the local park, man. Christ, give us a second. I remember the first time I was in school and I got uh, pissed drinking Frosty Jacks when I was like 13 in the park. I remember I started leaning on, on this girl and I started crying because my belly... I started crying because my belly was hurting. I wonder what she's doing now. I hope she's okay. I wish I was joking with that. The show then cuts to some girls in a sex ed class, and what one of them comes out with is hilarious. Yeah, that's sperm, because it says sperm cells cannot Half swim backwards. Coffee, so you drink coffee and then have sex and your sperm will go faster. <laughs> Where's that? Is it true? Maybe that's... That's that's where like everyone's going wrong. Maybe she just before you have sex, you just have to neck a can of rock star and then there. They're swimming like you say bolt. Wait, you say bolt doesn't swim, does he? He he runs. Like Michael Phelps. Yeah, so next time you you know you're gonna do the deed, just uh, have a scoop of pre-workout then. Bob's your uncle and uh Fanny's your aunt. We then get introduced to one of the main characters we will be focusing on in this episode, who's called Megan. Fifteen year old Megan has become one of Year 10's most well-known students. What would you like to be when you're older? A lawyer. But it'll be hard. Because, like, I wouldn't be used to the seriousness. Can you imagine yourself being serious? 
No. Yeah, I can't lie. I don't think you might be cut out to be a lawyer, love. Can you imagine a, a, a client gets, like, sentenced to, like, life in prison without patrol? And she's like, <laughs> uh, unlucky, mate. Sucks to be you. Well, I'm uh, neck and trebles and bars. You'll be behind them, love. Unlucky. Alongside not taking anything too seriously, the teachers then have a discussion about Megan because apparently she has mega anger problems. Megan had got upset, so she stormed off. Kirsty tried to stop her, Jamie tried to stop her, and she wasn't having any of it. And the very next clip is basically her just staring down an entire group of girls at lunch. As the girls ain't getting very evil, yeah. She has no friends, like, I can't stand the case. This is what we want. We want a nutter. I do feel bad because she definitely has some underlying issues which we're probably gonna see soon and cry about, but oh! Having a hothead in this episode just, just makes everything like fireworks. Miss Bollard, the head teacher, then says Megan needs to keep her nose out of other people's business. I think she's got some issues with the moment with her own identity. She needs to keep her nose out of other people's rows and she needs to stop. And then Megan says that she can't go a day without having an argument. It's so stupid for even if someone gives me a dirty look or says something I don't like, I just go mad. That's actually mad, you know, because I'm like the opposite of that. Like, I don't understand people that love having arguments. Those kind of people give me the fear. Like, how can you enjoy having an argument? If anyone watching this enjoys having arguments, just tell us why. I need to know. I need to understand the psychology behind it. We then see Megan have a row with a girl called Emily over a boy. I ain't going in there on my own with her. I don't knock her. I'll smack her. Oh. Megan's got involved in a falling out over a boy with a year nine girl. Oh. Nice. Emily, come here, please. Emily. Emily. The girls in this school are actually mental. The teacher's like, will you just come here? She's like, <laughs> that's nice. No. I rate the bollocks on her. She doesn't have any bollocks, but I rate them. And you say I'm not trying to sort it out when she's blatantly walking away. Sit by there for me. No, no, no. I don't care. I don't knock it. She's walking away, right? This teacher just has no authority. Whoever this guy is, bless his soul, but none of these, these children respect this man at all. I respect him trying to defuse this situation, but if somebody just keeps doing this in my face, shh, shh, shh. I feel like that's just going to get me more riled up. Like, what are you making that sound for? You sound like a boiling kettle. Just quickly, I want to stop this video to say that 70.8% of you are not subscribed to the channel. Oh. We've got a goal of hitting half a million subscribers on this channel, so if you want to be in the before half a million club, click subscribe right now. Now let's get back to the video. We then see two teachers talk about defusing the situation between the girls without actually doing anything. Two girls in rowing, like you know, Chinese whispers. If words get together, mediate it. Sort it out. Yeah. I think it would be a really good Just idea. Boys! Like. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Exactly right, again. You know what girls are like? I was talking about how they've got to put their rocks on the windowsill because it's Mercury Wreck Brigade. <laughs> be like the, the girls are going to be uh, with pitchforks in the comments. Bring them on. The teachers then sit both Megan and Emily down and Megan decides to put her beef to the side. Can you even remember what this is all about? I can't even remember the beginning of it. That says it all, doesn't it? We, we're carrying on something that we don't even know how it started. Make my dreams come true now and let this be the end of it. My street days are over. I'm going legit. <laughs> The show then turns its attention to our second main character of the episode, who's called Katie. And she is one of the biggest problem childs at Willow's school. I hate when like the class is silent. I like when everyone's talking. It's just like horrible. So I always gotta feel the need to start a bit of banter to get everyone like talking. Yes, psychopath. I used to get overwhelmed when everyone was talking. I'd be like, well everyone just shut up. Shut up! Shh! Get out of here. Across the whole school. <laughs> Quite possibly she could be the one. The worst behaved female yeah, in year 10. You have to be able to do this on your own, I can't. Isn't this so funny when, like, your mate, you should get kicked out of the class? That was the one design flaw of schools, how they, they left, like, a like a window in the door. Because you would just have your mates going... <laughs> and you'd be like... They, that was good times. Katie then tells the teachers that she wants to go home because she doesn't want to spend any more time in isolation. It's Tuesday morning and Katie is refusing to stay in isolation. So her head of house, Mr. Hennessy, is called. <laughs> Did you see a little look to the camera there? So her head of house, Mr. Hennessy, is called. She's like, it's about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> the teachers then ring Katie's mum and she gets to speak to her on the phone. And she's basically just screaming at Katie on the phone, so Katie just puts the phone down. What do you mean? No, no, I'm not doing three hours in there. Okay. 
And I can't lie. It's kind of cool. Putting the phone down on your own mom is, is wild. Eventually, you're going to have to face the wrath of what you've just done. Your actions are going to are gonna catch up with you with a slap. It's like you're buy now, pay later, but, but, but with punishment. It feels good in the moment, but you know later down the line, it's going to come back and haunt you and kick you right in the teeth. Sorry, did, did your mom not... Did, that, your mum, right, I thought your mum did that as well. Honestly, it's worse than, I don't know, catching your grandma having a wank. Why, why was, why did that pop in my head? That's the one I'm going to have to sit with. No, I'm not going to sit. Anyway, we then get to learn a little bit more about Katie, which is normally like the best part about th these episodes is you understand why they might be acting out. And we learn that Katie's parents uh, split up when she was seven. And like we've seen in the other educating videos that we've did, like the, the educating Essex one with Finney, his parents split up and it just totally changed his behavior. We're seeing the same thing with Katie now. When parents split, like it can have such a massive effect on the child and like it's as if nobody else understands. It's like your whole world is like turned upside down whereas everyone else is just continuing as normal and you're like expected to be normal with them and it must be so hard because like you've got no uh control of that situation right you are totally out of control and you probably you don't know what's to come and that's like the biggest fear especially being a, a, like a child in school i'm just so lucky that i can't remember my parents being together so like i never had to go through the actual experience of them breaking up. We then see Katie get like really upset in school and she ends up ringing her dad for some comfort. I can't. It's not fair dad. She's just gonna scream at me. If stuff happens with my mum and my dad then it makes me moody. I'll go into school like moody. Oh, I feel so. I feel really sorry for this girl. Going through school at like her age is like stressful enough with all of this, all this pressure you have but then also when you go home you've got like even more crap to deal with. Like sometimes you just need a crap like I imagine people watching this that have been through like similar stuff like sometimes you just need to have that like outburst of emotion while you cry and unfortunately for Katie it's happened in school where people will probably take the piss out, out of her for crying but sometimes you just need to have it and then after you feel a little bit better because you haven't bottled it all up. I'm sure I cried loads of times in school. I think I did you know but like not in front of people. I think I cried like once in front of people and then I never did it again. Damn I can't handle this. Why is me pasta king so watery? This is the fourth time this week. The show then cuts to Katie in her her favourite lesson, which is drama. Okie doke. Bad head, is it? I have a migraine. Have you got a note to say as much? Should I go to the office? Note to look fab. A note to look like a film star. Dab, she actually does look like a celebrity with sunglasses on. That's hilarious. She looks like Jennifer Addiston or something, just walking in like, I don't need lessons, I'm already a star. Also, did that teacher say, does, does she have a note to prove that she's got a bad head? Two sex love, I'll just get me brain to print off a receipt to say I've got a migraine. Like, what do you mean? Or is that to prove why she's got the sunglasses on? Like, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. The only time I remember needing a note was like, you know, like when you want to get out of a PE lesson, you just write a note and just forge a signature. If you're like doing cross country, you're like, oh, sorry, I can't. My cat's died. Can't do it. Sorry. We'll start off by focusing in on our eye contact, locking eye contact with somebody, maintaining that eye contact. Katie, this is going to be a little bit more difficult for you to do. <laughs> It's like she's got some ass out of the X-Men. She takes her glasses off and just lays as burned down the entire school. Katie, this is going to be a bit more difficult for you because you will kill the person with your X-ray vision. I think I should be the royalty. <laughs> Go on then, Katie, try it. Thank Swap. you. Three, <laughs> two, one, and freeze. I really like that because it's almost like you're grabbing all of it for yourself. But what did she do? Where's my star in drama? I just got told to take me shoes and socks off. Creeps. It's nice to have praise from someone where I'm used to like negative stuff all the time. And it's just something like that makes me like feel better. Oh, bless her. Like this is, I get that. Like she's clearly like just full of like negative things being thrown at her by whether it's a teacher, a mom. Like she's just constantly in this throat, like this, this whirlwind of negativity. And one person said one thing nice about her and it's like made her laugh and like she feels class. After this, Katie then takes another L as she gets kicked out of her IT class for apparently kicking the desk. <laughs> He said that it was her that kicked the desk, so I was oh. just passing on. You just admitted you actually. Oh, there we go. Then off to isolation. You're not trying to work with me at all. Yeah, because you're not listening to me. You keeps on giving me looks all the time. Damage any more school problems? How am I damaging stuff? <laughs> Get on my nerves. You've nearly smashed I that window. Don't know 
<laughs> clearly, this reaction isn't solely based off her getting put into isolation. This is clearly a build-up of emotion from everything that's going on. It's so hard because, like, isolation, like, I guess it gives her, like, time to think about everything, but doesn't that make it worse? Like, sometimes when you're alone with your own thoughts, then everything just gets, like, ten times more intense for you. It's such a hard, like, situation to deal with for the teachers. But then the teachers give Katie the easiest decision of her life. Well, you now got two choices. Back to isolation or home. Home. Um, sorry, is, is that even a choice? Right, Katie, you've got two choices. You can have a free tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream, or you can have a guy called Ben and a guy called Jerry come and beat your mother up in front of your eyes. Choose wisely, love. I'll go for option A, thank you very much. We then see a shot of Katie crying, and I can't lie, this is kind of hard to watch. <laughs> This girl is like 100% just overwhelmed at the minute and she's not receiving like the correct support that she feels like she needs. Katie then says one worry that she has about uh, misbehaving in school and what it can lead to. Oh no, I'm gonna end up like one of those people who's like living in a council flat on an estate on the door. Hey, love, there's nothing wrong with a council flat in Cardiff, thank you very much. Could be worse, you could have a council flat in Sunderland. A mud hut's considered a posh place there. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a council house, love. Katie then decides to take a snapchat while she's mid cry one that might just say well what's the point you know i'll just drift along and not focus in life <laughs> I wonder what she captured that. No replies. Feeling down. Don't ask why. Streaks will be slow for the time being. I used to love that on Snapchat where people would put like a photo of them sad and they'd say like, I'm sad, but don't ask why. It's like, why did you post then? If you don't want people to ask, why are you putting that on your story? You want people to ask, so just, so just say that. One of my favourite parts about these educating videos is it'll have such a deep moment like Katie crying her eyes out here. And then it just cuts to another child doing something absolutely mental. <laughs> Damn, he, he put those Oxford dictionaries on their asses. Ironically, words can't describe what I've just seen. If we did look up built different in one of those dictionaries, it would just be a photo of this boy right here. If he keeps going the way he's going, maybe one day he'll knock down a thesaurus. Katie's mom then gets called into the school to discuss Katie's behavior with one of the teachers. How many maths lessons have you stayed in? I don't know, because no, you just don't like it uh, when... Katie, just answer the question to start with. How many have you stayed in? And straight away, I feel like this is where you see maybe it's what is right wrong with how Katie's mom deals with Katie. It seems like instead of Katie's mom asking Katie like why she's acting out, like how she's feeling, like trying to understand, it seems like straight away she just becomes like aggressive and kind of just tries to make Katie feel even worse. Actually, no offence Kate, I think you're embarrassing me because I never brought you up to be like this and you always promised me you'd always learn from what I tell you and you wouldn't do what I did and you're just doing it. I have to come here, leave my job to pick you up. I get what she's saying like that, obviously like that's like a Day of without money for, for her that she could have earned, but it doesn't actually impact Katie in the way that she I think she wants this to. That just makes Katie feel even more guilty, which is just gonna make her feel even worse. Do you know what I mean? Like I think Katie's right in saying like that's literally not her fault. Like she and the, the a behavior is, but I don't know. I just I feel a little bit for Katie here because I feel like she's constantly just in this negative bubble. It's funny because she clearly has the same kind of fire as what Katie has, but she won't admit it. And this is shown through when she leaves. Like the teacher even says to her, like, you are the same as Katie and she she just refuses it. I think we're always gonna have a little bit of attitude with her. I don't know where she gets it from. I really... Okay. No, no. <laughs> I'm telling you. You can tell the teachers, like, yeah, I, I can see why why Katie is the way she is. No offense to the mom. Like, the mom is obviously doing, like, as much as she can and she's working full time, but the blame is not all on Katie. He has what I'm trying to trying to get her. The show then cuts back to Megan, who is just being an arse. Can you move out of my way? Can you move? Can you move? Can you move? Can you move? Why should they move? They were literally having a conversation. Why did they have to move? Because you're coming through, love. Who are you, the queen? You're acting like Philip. Schofield and Holly Willoughby at, at a royal funeral. Get past, don't get to the front, get out. I'm not waiting around. Megan then heads to her anger management class, which is taken by a school counsellor. We're in F7 though, Megan. Yeah, obviously I know that, don't mind. Well, what, what are we down here for? Oh, go away, go away. Come on, have to go. Go away! Well, definitely seem like those classes are helping. Keep up the great work, guys. If anything,
thinks it's angrier than the last one. It's then said that Megan has an argument with another girl at dinner time and ends up punching a wall. Megan has lost her temper again after an argument with a girl in her year. Why did you do that then, Meg? Jesus Christ, Megan. Meg, that's serious, that is now. After this, one of the teachers finally sits Megan down and just asks her, like, why she thinks she might be acting out and how she's feeling in general. And miraculously, she actually opens up. It's funny that, isn't it? Just, like, asking somebody, like, how they're feeling and, like, why they might be acting out actually gets them to tell you rather than just shouting at them. Megan, she doesn't want to be seen to have any weaknesses, I think. It can be a giant step to actually talk to somebody about stuff that's happening in school or something that's happening in a home. In this meeting, Megan basically says that she's got a lot on her mind because a dad who left when she was three has recently got back in contact with her. I don't really know my dad. He walked out when I was three years old, so I just find it hard to talk about him. How long has that been going on? I only started speaking to him again after this year, I think. Ah, uh, see? Now we know why she's acting like a bit of a knob. It's not because she's actually a bad person. It's because she's actually going through some real shit. And you know yourself, right? If you're, like, stressed about one thing, like, any other little issues that come up in your life, you get, like, automatically more stressed about them because you're already on, like, a raised level of stress. And this is clearly... Now we know this is what is happening to Megan. Oh, it's at the back of my mind. I, I ask my mum all the time, what's wrong, like, what's wrong with me? Like, why is he walked out? So sometimes I think it's, like, my fault why he walked out. Every time we do one of these videos it hits kiss you educated series kiss you that is so true though like you do uh you do like blame yourself when like megan was three like how is that her fault you know it's not until you get a bit older you realize that but when she is the age that she is she probably is going to be feeling that way that that she caused all this stress even though she had no part in, in making that. Megan then says like she feels better than ever that she spoke to a teacher and fair play to the teacher that sat her down because like you have to give so much respect to those teachers that are like emotionally intelligent enough to know that something's up with the student rather than just straight away being aggressive and shouting at them. I know this sounds cliche and I don't want to sound cringe at all but like if you are going through some some crap right now that you just like you know it's weighing you down just tell someone. Like I know that's such a, like a cliche thing to say but if you can someone you trust just just Ask them for a chat and I'm sure they'll be up for it because it can be a huge weight off your shoulders. But uh, yeah. Switching back to Katie, it's now a new term and the head teachers changed their timetable around to put more drama classes into a school day so that she enjoys school a lot more. And Katie's music teacher says that he wants to channel Katie's energy into something positive. So he picked it out of the entire class to perform at the end of the class to him. Give it everything you've got now. Come on. Don't with them. They're not, they can't hear you. Oh my god, this is like so... I feel like I'm gonna get goosebumps because she said at the start of the episode, like, she needs to stop caring what people think and now everyone's staring at her. This is such a situation where you would care what people think. Oh. I can almost see it. That dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying, you'll never reach it. Made, I've got goosebumps. What? Oh, I'm a softie. I'm not meant to have feelings. Boys aren't meant to have feelings. What is this emotion? I don't like it. Go on, Katie, lass. Don't care what those people think. Sing the climb without a care in the world. Miley would be proud of you right now. And Joe McKeldry, who actually sang an Eddie's winning song in X Factor in 2009. Bit of pop trivia for you. This is all for free, this, by the way. All it costs is your bloody time. The music teacher then, like, gives a load of praise for this and says that you did excellent. And again, that positive feeling feedback just makes Katie feel really good and she's gonna go on and do this exact same song in a mock exam. Switching again back to Megan, it's been an entire month since her and Mr Norman had their heart to heart chat about her dad and everything and he's decided to bring Megan's mom in to just update her about the progress that Megan's been making and he reveals that since their chat that they had, Megan hasn't had a single behavioural issue in the entire month which is like mental compared to what she was like at the start of the episode. I really do hope that like teachers watch this show and also parents and see like the effect that it has when you just like listen to, to young people. Some people are going through real stuff and if you just listen to them like it, it can help them so much. I feel like a broken record but I really mean that. thought it would be good for you to come in just to celebrate the progress that she's making. You know? well, it is, it is nice when you have positive feedback. Just to give you a little bit of information about Megan and her dad as well, Megan actually says that she has decided to cut contact with her dad and, and not message him as she feels a lot happier without him in her life, which, go 
one last fair play. Pop off queen, you can do this. Do what makes you happy, love. Moving on, it's now time for Katie's mock exam where she will be singing the climb again on stage and be getting judged by her music teacher. However, her grandma has recently died in the in the in the previous weeks to this. Which is just like horrendous timing. I know there's there's no good time for your grandma to die, but right before your mock exam, I'd be like, Granny, could you not have held on for a week or two? I've got to sing the climb on stage, man. I can remember my grandmother died. It's it's awful, but you just gotta try and now just get on. The worst thing is, is like maybe you're like met at the house and all that, and like she weren't there, and like that was what upset me. And upsetting because like, yeah. what house? Now with the added thing of our grandma dying, I feel like I'm gonna go in this final performance. I feel oh, I'm gonna have, wait. I'm gonna have to prep myself. Your grandmother passed away. The lyrics, yeah, the climb, the struggles I'm facing. Use that. Use it to give us a performance. Oh my God! What? This guy should be a motivational speaker. How are you gonna say that before she does this performance? My voice has went up a couple of decibels. I don't think I can bring it back down. <sighs> Come on, tell, tell me a story. I can almost see it. That dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lost with no direction. Oh, I no. Uh, I can feel it coming. I can feel it coming. That's actually that's actually so emotional. What? You might as well have just got a couple of puppies on stage and killed them. Like, what are you trying to do to me? You've got to be a psychopath to not feel something right there. Even the teachers who are examining that even start crying. Right, well done, you. Well done, she doesn't give her an A after that, then <laughs> the world's the world's not right. The show then says that Katie, after this, improves in all of her other lessons as well. Like she's finally getting back on track with everything. I'm being quiet, sir. I'm being... You're right, Katie. You are. So, actually, uh, because I'm just such a good pupil. You were much better today. Get in. She took the chair in. That's progress that I'll take. The show then finishes with telling us that Katie got a C in a mock exam. I don't know how she got a C. Like, the woman literally cried. Anyway, at least she passed. And it says that she now plans to do drama at college. And the show says that Megan has constant chats with Mr. Norman about how she's feeling and she hasn't had a single behavioural incident all year. I think this has been the best episode we've ever watched of Educating because the, the progress has been the best. Like, these were two severe problem children that are now getting back on track. It's so sweet. What a banger of an episode this has been. I feel on top of the well. If you would like to see me break down another educating video, click right here. Or if you would like to see me react to a British TV show on the Reacts channel, click right here.